Hey y'all, I'm Patrick Haggerty with ROI Training, and in today's video, I would like to talk a little bit about using Google Cloud's Metrics Explorer. Now, I have a file I've created that contains a lot of helpful links in Google Cloud. Um, you can find this file at roi-links.com slash gcp-links. Now, if we're talking about the Metrics Explorer, if I scroll to my operations section, I have a subsection on monitoring, and I have some nice documentation here on things like how do you use the Metrics Explorer, information on how metrics are captured, uh, information on the available metrics. And if you haven't already seen my video on researching a metric before you use it, you might want to watch that before you watch this video. Okay, so to do a little bit of testing of metrics over here, I went ahead and created a Kubernetes cluster. So I have an example Kubernetes cluster, demo cluster, which I built. I then downloaded from Google the Google microservice demo. In my links file, if you look in my Kubernetes section, I actually have a link to Google's microservice demo in there. It's essentially a storefront, right? So if I look at my cluster workloads, I see it's a different series of microservices that essentially implement the storefront. If I look at my services, I see the services themselves. And if I wanted to, I can actually open up my load balancer and here is my storefront. Now, something else that this microservice demo has is it actually has a workload, which is a load generator workload. So the load generator is exactly what it sounds like. It's using something called Locust to throw load on my application, right? Okay. So imagine I want to go in and examine what's happening with CPU load inside my Kubernetes cluster. Now, there, there are several ways I could do that. The most basic way would be to use the Metrics Explorer. The Metrics Explorer is kind of the cornerstone um, application in the monitoring world, and it allows me to go out there and look at any metric that I might want to. Again, do your research before you get here, right? So you know what metric you're looking for. If I'm looking at Kubernetes, Kubernetes runs on Compute Engine. So I'm really looking at VM CPU utilization, right? So if I go select the resource of type VM, VM instance or GCE instance, that restricts the raw list of metrics to metrics that are related to virtual machines. Now, there are a lot of metrics with virtual machines, right? So if I look at my metrics with virtual machines, always in this tool, make sure you scroll up to make sure you're actually at the top. You'll see it actually has a section on popular metrics, and one of the popular metrics is CPU utilization. Over on the right, you see when I mouse over CPU utilization, it'll show me some details on what that metric means. And again, you should already know that because you've already done your research. So if I do CPU utilization, you'll see it will show me some information about CPU utilization, but it's really showing me for all my virtual machines. In this project, I have some virtual machines that essentially make up my Kubernetes cluster, but I also have some virtual machines that make up some other workloads I have in this cluster here, right? So if I just want to see the Kubernetes clusters, okay, well, that's a good example of where I might apply a filter. Filters restrict data so I'm not seeing all of the items. I'm just seeing a kind of a subset based on some filter criteria. Okay? So for example, in this case, all of my machines that make up GKE, my GKE cluster, they all have a common name. They all have a common start to the name. You see, that's these machines right here. You notice how they all start GKE demo cluster? Uh, okay. So I can come in here and assign a filter and I could filter by instance name, for example. When you assign a filter, notice you can do an equals or not equal kind of filter, but you also see some of them contain the tilde. If you do an equals, it's a literal equals. So if I wanted to look at one of my demo machines, that would be easy to do, right? If I wanna see all of my cluster, however, then I really need uh, the equals tilde. Equals tilde, 
accepts a regular expression instead of an actual value, right? So let me start with one of my machine names, and then I'm going to edit that. So yeah, I want my GKE demo cluster default node pool dash, and then I can say dot star, which is regular expression speak for followed by a series of characters, right? And if I apply that filter, notice now it'll just show those machines that make up my demo cluster, right? So I've narrowed down my machines to a series of machines that I'm looking for right there. So there's the three machines that comprise my cluster. Okay, now, another thing you could do if you wanted to is you could group your resources. Grouping would be, if I don't want to see each of the machines displayed as an individual line, if I wanted to combine them all together, then again, I could do the exact same thing. I could assign a group and it would group machines together. Okay. Now, since I already have my, the group of machines I want, another piece you can do, group by would be useful if I had like two clusters and I wanted to group the demo clusters together and I wanted to group the you know, prod clusters together or something. Group by, group by would work really well for that. If you want to just group the lines you see on the chart together, um, whether you have a group by or not, you can also do an aggregation. Aggregation basically means apply math to simplify what I'm seeing. Okay? If I aggregate by, let's say, average, notice what it now does is it will actually give me one line that represents uh, uh, the average of the three lines that really make up my cluster, right? So a couple of ways we could do the same thing. I could have done a group by with an aggregation, right? When you group by, it groups by math. So if you have a group by, first group them together, then use math to figure out how to combine them. And like I said, that would be useful if I had one line per cluster. If I've already done a filter to filter down to the exact lines I want to see, then I don't need a group by as well. I've already kind of filtered out what I don't want to see. Now I can just show the average. You can see here, um, this was some this is some CPU utilization that happened when I was very first building my cluster and doing some testing. Then you can see I ran my sample workload for 15 minutes without making any changes. And then what I did is I came in here and I edited the part of the application that's doing the load generation. So I jumped the amount of load I'm throwing on my cluster so I could see an uptick in my CPU utilization, right? And you'll see that right there. So that's where I activated my extra load. And so now I'm hovering at a slightly higher CPU utilization. A couple of other things you can do in Metrics Explorer. We do have some advanced options here. Um, you can determine how often your chart lays a data point, okay? By default, it's gonna lay a data point every minute. If I change that to lay a data point to something like every five minutes or something, what you'll see is it tends to flatten spikes. If you have traffic that is, or, or metrics that have a lot of very volatile spikes, and you, you kinda wanna flatten those out and see overall trends. Like you see here, I can see that trend up. I still see that, but again, I don't see it's not quite as spiky. And this isn't really a very spiky workload. It's not as quite as spiky as it was initially. Okay, So you can do that. Um, aligners. Aligners are behind the scenes when Google is gathering perhaps multiple measurements together per minute. How is it gathering them together? Behind the scenes, we have a CPU utilization metric. Google is taking measurements at least once a minute, but Google could conceivably be taking measurements, say, every 10 or 20 seconds. Well, if Google is collecting multiple measurements, how is Google combining those measurements into that minute? That is called alignment. Typically, you do something like average, but again, I can change that if I want to. Um, my legend template, my legend template allows me to kind of dynamically change what I'm seeing on this uh, uh, legend for my chart. So I can come in here and say things like, uh, you know, demo cluster 
um, CPU load. You know, and you see it just changes the metric there. It changes the name you're seeing. Um, if I turned off my uh, if I turned off my aggregation, so it's showing the multiple lines again. Do you see that would show me the demo CPU load for like each of my machines? If I want to change that label, so besides having static content, you know, like uh, demo cluster CPU load, if I still wanted it to include, let's say, the machine name, you can use this add filter. It's a bit of a misnomer. It's kind of add dynamic value. Click on that and add in, say, something like the instance name. And you see what it'll do is it will contain my static text, but now it also has a dynamic value that it's adding in there as well. So they all start demo CPU load, yes. Last but not least, your metrics explorer, you can add multiple metrics. So if you wanna see multiple metrics on the same chart, you can do that. The URL that the metrics explorer builds actually contains all of the stuff that you put into the metrics explorer. So you could bookmark that. Or you'll also notice over here, there is a share by URL that just gives you a nice copy, a nice uh, uh, version of that URL. You can copy that, and if you bookmarked it or emailed it to someone else who had the right level of access, they could come back to the same chart and see the chart like pre-filled with all the configurations you've chosen. There we go, excellent. Good deal. So a little bit of information about using the Metrics Explorer. I'm Patrick Haggerty with ROI Training, and I hope you've enjoyed this video.